Lucas Dixon here, the, uh, the urban farmer at the Good Stuff Urban Garden. Uh, we are uh, we're, we're growing these beautiful plants here to, uh, to try to help show the community how they can convert some of the vacant lots that they deal with uh, into not only small businesses, but places to supply the communities with fresh, fresh organic local food. Uh, the SARE program allowed a lot of this to, to, to grow, uh, quite literally. Uh, it would have been a much smaller scale project. Uh, we, were, we were looking at just ways of putting smaller gardens on the lot. And uh, the SARE project allowed not only you know, the opportunity to uh, increase the scale of what we were doing, but also to involve the community on a much larger scale. I, I think that this could be used as a model for what other vacant lots can become. Um, there's a lot of initiative in the city right now to get rid of, well, not necessarily get rid of, but to change the lots, and to, to change the face of the city, uh, especially in these areas. Um, on some blocks, there are, you know, five to six in a, a vacant lots in a one block, you know, um, area. And so um, my my intention would be that this, this could be used to, um, as a model to create other local business owners and also community space. Um, it's, it's a really small space relative to the whole lot that, that is needed to share with the community. And so um, it's, it's incredibly feasible and viable for a business to exist on the same place where um, there's community space. We, uh, we started out by canvassing the neighborhood and just letting people know that we were going to be here and that we were going to be installing a garden and asking for ideas um, and requests, things that they might want to see planted, things um, that they might uh, just want to help out with, all of that. Um, and then since then, we've, since we've part started putting all the plants in and all of that, uh, we did a community planting day where we, we did a barbecue and we brought out, oh, actually it was mostly kids, which was fantastic. And the, the barbecues are a way, because, you know, food is, the, it's, in my opinion, the best way to bring people together. People, it's, it's like the oldest thing that people have done. Um, and so we bring everyone together around food, and then we uh, focus the, the, the gathering on a, on a topic of discussion. So we've done uh, mulching with grass clippings for soil, uh, for water retention, for nutrients for the soil, and for uh, weed prevention, and uh, that was awesome. We did mulch, or, uh, composting, rather, and then we also did seed saving because we grow heirloom varieties here. And so uh, showing people how easy it really is to, you know, leave a few beans on the plant, let them dry out, uh, you know, pull the, pull the seeds out, and then you can regrow those next year. So a huge, a huge part of what we're trying to do is, is uh, I guess what I would say is the, is the full circle. We, we compost for nutrients, so that way you don't need to add, you know, ammonium nitrate fertilizer or anything like that. Um, we do companion planting, um, not only for pest control, but also for, for pollination to bring in pollinators. One of our best pollinators is borage. Um, and also uh, the water collection. We, we built this here structure and, and filling up these nice, nice red barrels here with water so that we can water in times of dryness like we've had the past couple of weeks. Um, so yeah, so between the composting for nutrients, the seed saving for, for seed for next year, and the water collection, uh, you really have the full cycle of, of growth and then death and rebirth in the spring with the plants and you don't really need much input from uh, outside sources. Yeah, we did a talk at Discovery World for, uh, it was uh, held by the Milwaukee Area uh, work, Workforce Investment Board. And uh, they basically brought in a, a group of, or groups of kids from different uh, local organizations. One was Urban Underground, which is actually a youth program run by the youth. It's pretty cool. Um, and all the, the, the topics of discussion were, uh, Specifically, uh, food and agriculture, but then uh, entrepreneurships in in those uh, fields, and so we uh, we talked about urban farming and uh, the opportunity of 
um, you know, kind of all of all of the things that we went through. So uh, started with well. You know, you're interested in urban farming. What do you do? Well, you need a you need a lot. You need a place to grow. So we talked about uh, the opportunity to um, purchase these lots uh, in Milwaukee, and and uh, this lot here was after closing costs was nine hundred dollars. So it's in incredibly affordable, incredibly available, um, and and different ways of raising that capital, whether through uh, cooperative ownership, so getting a group of collective owners together to purchase or anything like that and uh, and then moving forward to where you can get resources like this is all repurposed lumber um, and uh, you know opportunity for them to how how they could grow the food what they would do with the food after they grew it so how do you get rid of it um, we talked about value-added product so not just selling produce but doing things like pickles or um, you know, we have some fruit, we have raspberries and strawberries, so you can do jams and jellies. And because of the pickle bill here in Wisconsin, uh, it allows you to sell those things without state licensing. You just need to register as a business, which is a pre it's 20 bucks, and it's a pretty standard process for becoming a business, you know, registering uh, as a business. So, um, you know, we shared with them all the steps, and it was really actually, it was great. A lot of the kids were chattering and talking at their tables, and when, when they started hearing about, um, you know, the availability of this as an option, uh, the fact that, that you're running your own business, I mean, you are the boss, you are, you are in charge, um, uh, and the fact that they could, they could sell these things without a whole lot of licensing, that they can get in at markets, that it gives them, you know, opportunities to meet people, and, you know, doing the markets, you just talk, you just get to talk to people from all over the place, and um, they were really, I mean, all the, all the chatter stopped, you know. Um, and my, my, my kind of partner in all of this is my brother who's 16, which is uh, actually the same age as all of the, all of the students that were at the, at the discussion. And so when they heard that, um, that's when noise came back into the audience because they were like, what, what, you know, oh my goodness. Uh, they couldn't believe it. Even, even the man running the, organi the uh, Discovery World discussion came up afterwards and was like, you know, you're 16 years old, like really? Um, so, I mean, that really caught, the, caught their attention, and, and it was great. We had, uh, afterwards, we took a walk around Discovery World. We had kids coming up to us, asking us questions. Now, even that it was over, you know, they were so intrigued. Um, so that was really cool, uh, you know, really, and it made us feel really good. It was great. It was really gratifying.